Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's episode we will be setting up this vehicle. Uh, obviously you can apply these same mechanics to an actual car. Instead what I am using is a skateboard that I grabbed from Thunder's Sketchfab uh, profile. Uh, he's a community member that has amazing skills when it comes to 3D modeling. Uh, the guy has made so many amazing models. So let me just real quickly show you some of them. So here is his Sketchfab link. You can find it down in the description box. He has characters, uh, some kind of trees, uh, all kinds of different objects like items, battery packs, outhouse. Here is the skateboard that I'm using and it even has uh, my logo on it. So it's me, bro. So this is that this this I really really like so that's cool for me uh, and then yeah he has all kinds of items they are all really really high quality uh, it's they are low on vertices but the visuals as you can see are just amazing for these models so go ahead check him out leave a lot of likes and yeah let's get on with the video. Before we get started, make sure that you have the Advanced Vehicle Systems plugin available and it is installed to your version of Unreal Engine 4. Uh, mine already is, so I can't install it once more. And then once you have done that, make sure you go to your plugins folder and look for the Advanced Vehicle System. Enable it, it will require the engine restart. So restart that and come back. Then once we have done that, the next thing that we need to do is go to the project settings and provide some inputs by default. I already have those over here. So I'm going to be using the move forward, which are bind to the W and S keys for one and minus one on the scale. So basically, so we can drive forward and backwards. And also we have the move right for A and D keys and the space bar for the handbrake. So I have those set up. So that's going to be a little bit easier uh, to set those up in the actual blueprint. Obviously, you can also use the key events, but the action mapping and axis mapping is going to be a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and let's create ourselves the master vehicle. So we need a new blueprint class and just look for a vehicle or AVS. And it's going to give you the AVS vehicle once you have this plugin installed. Select so that, I'm going to call this Vech, uh, Vech, uh, I wanted to call it Vech Master, Vech Master. Let's go ahead, let's open this up. Let's go to the event graph and on begin play, we need this begin play and the parents begin play as well. And I'm going to do this like they are doing this uh, for the most part, just like in the documentation. I will have the link down in the description box to their documentation. You will be maybe able to find more info over there because I'm not going to go over light and uh, uh, trailer uh, attachments and all that stuff, but you can attach trailers and do all kinds of crazy stuff with this and set up lighting and all that stuff. So first, uh, we need to start the engine. So whenever we spawn the vehicle, its engine would be already running. You can obviously uh, set it up that you need to press a key in order to run this engine, but uh, I'm going to start mine by default. And then I'm also by default going to set the shifter position to be in the drive. So we have this set up. Now, the next thing that I want to do is create the movement forward, backwards, and also the steering. So I'm going to look for my move forward axis event and from this um, I'm gonna do th this one is the only one that's gonna be different from their documentation because um, they didn't change the shifter based on the axis input so forward or backwards uh, so um, I'm gonna do this so that it would change the, sh the shifters gear so that we can go in reverse once we press S as well so from the axis value I'm gonna check if this is bigger or equal than zero I'm going to do an if and then from this I'm going to set the shifter position. So for yes, if it's bigger, then we're going to set it in the drive. But if it's false, I'm going to set this to reverse. So it's going to look like this. And then from both of these, I will set the throttle input. And from both of these, so connect the execution and the throttle then is the axis value. So that's going to be our throttle. Now we need the next one, which is the uh, move right axis event. And this one is going to be a lot more simpler. We don't need to change anything. What we can do is just set steering input and then connect the axis value to the steering. Now let's set up the handbrake. So for that, I'm going to have my action map uh, jump event. 
and on pressed I'm gonna set uh, hand handbrake input and on pressed I'm gonna set this to true and on released we are going to set this back to false so that it would release our handbrake now we can also set up the shifting um, for this I'm gonna do this quite simple all I'm gonna do is basically use the shift left shift and left CTRL so left control and for this we can then just simply uh, set uh, uh, not set move shifter position on shift I'm gonna move a gear up and on control I'm gonna move a gear down uh, I'm not gonna have any actual gears I'm gonna have just one gear but you can set up the gears I'm gonna show you where you can do that uh, near the end of this video so these are the main basic controls that we need so we have the uh, forward and reverse driving we have the steering we have the handbrake and the shifter so this is all good we are basically done in the master uh, we it's better to set these up in the master so that we don't have to recreate these in every single one of our vehicles obviously we could but it's quite pointless so let's go ahead and let's close this off let's right click our vehicle master and let's create a child out of this i'm going to call this skateboard so I'm not going to have like an actual car, instead I'm going to have a skateboard, but they both will function exactly the same way. So one thing that is really important, that the skateboard and the vehicles uh, would face the x-axis once they are forward. Uh, you will see if it gives you, basically, if it drives sideways, uh, you will see the wheels turning the wrong way so you might have to bring this into the the model into the modeling software and rotate this one more way how you can tell that it is off axis is by in the child obviously we need a camera so that we can see so if you add a spring arm and then if you add a camera to this spring arm as well you will see that the camera is going to be in a different rotation so it might be something like this then that's bad uh, so you need to then bring it into the modeling software and make sure that whenever all the values are at zero and scaling obviously at one, the camera should be at one of the sides of the vehicle. So preferably the back side of the vehicle. So I'm going to move this up like this. And just for the cosmetics, I'm also going to add a skeletal mesh so that I can add the character standing on top of it. So I'm going to have the mannequin and I'm going to use a specific pose, which is going to be the, not the jump, uh, we need the idle pose. Here we go. And I'm going to bring this to zero, zero. Let's bring this guy up a little bit and rotate him like so. There we go. So the default animation looks really great because his foot, feet are basically exactly like they should be on a skateboard. So that's going to look pretty decent I guess and the next thing that we need is to add the actual wheels so let's go ahead and add a component and let's look for a vehicle wheel component now make sure to unparent this so it's not under the character so by default it already creates you this uh, collision sphere and it's gonna work perfect the wheels are going to rotate just fine uh, and it's gonna use the wheel radius so you can obviously scale it up or scale it down but if you just simply provide a mesh static mesh for the wheel it is going to take that mesh's uh, collision so mine is already set up so make sure that perhaps you open it up your actual model and you change its collisions because by default this model Unreal Engine made some cubic Kish type of collision so what I did was simply selected this default collision deleted that one and I just simply added a capsule collision instead if you don't know much about these custom collisions and setups then go ahead uh, look for a playlist called beginner series I believe on my channel and I have a detailed video about collisions and a lot of good stuff in that video so make sure you watch that one uh, so what you want to do next is actually align your vehicles with your your wheels with, with your vehicle so I'm gonna align my wheels so I'm gonna move this down so it's gonna be roughly around there the position seems to be all right then I'm just gonna duplicate this wheel put it like this so actually let me bring this in a little bit then I'm gonna duplicate both of these 
and I'm gonna bring these to the rear end as well so there we go that seems to be just about right so now we have our wheels set up and the next thing that we want to do is we want to set up the wheels that are going to be steering so in my case the front wheels so I'm gonna select both of the front wheels and then on the right side in the details panel we can set that is turning wheel so these are the wheels that are going to be allowed to turn now since this is a skateboard I don't want the wheels to rotate significantly so I'm gonna change the max steering angle to something like 10 uh, the next thing that I will do is select the rear wheels and I will make sure that those are the driving wheels if I want this to be a rear driven vehicle. Uh, if I want to make sure that it's a four wheel drive, I'm going to select all the wheel wheels and select is driving wheel for all of them. And actually that's exactly what I'm going to keep. Now by default this is going to be very jumpy vehicle because the spring strength is quite high the wheel travel is quite high obviously if you have like a proper car you will want to have some wheel travel you will want to have some spring strength in my sp skateboard I, I don't really want none of that but we're gonna adjust that in a second first let's go ahead and let's actually try this out in the real world so uh, so we'll know mesh detected that is interesting uh, let's go ahead let's have a look once more recompile no mesh detected okay uh, let's see oh there we go that was just a glitch so uh, let's add this pawn as our main character and to do so I need to add a game mode I'm just gonna call it new blueprint obviously you will probably already have a game mode so in the world settings I'm gonna set up new uh, new blueprint as my game mode and the default pawn then will be my skateboard so this guy right here so then we can press play there we go we have this guy so obviously as you can see now the springs are a little odd so it's gonna you can see I have a wheel travel which is quite bad <laughs> it doesn't really look realistic to a skateboard but for a car with maybe some proper suspension you will want to have some kind of a wheel travel so uh, controls seem to work the vehicle is drivable so let's do some small configurations so I'm gonna select all wheels and then I'm gonna change the spring strength to like one and wheel travel to one as well so that the wheels do have some kind of a travel and some kind of a suspension but so that it is very 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 small uh, one more thing for our handbrake so I'm gonna select the rear wheels we want to set that is handbrake wheel so that the rear wheels would get locked whenever we press space just like an actual handbrake would and yeah uh, obviously here as you can see we can change a lot of settings we can change the brake pressure uh, invert torque uh, so that's maybe if your wheel vehicle is the other way around I'm guessing uh, shock absorption sh spring down force all kinds of settings over here uh, skid sounds so how the vehicle is gonna sound when it's uh, sliding uh, and also if you would go to the class defaults here you can change even more settings so we can change the steering curves steering speeds um, you can change the units from miles to kilometers knots and whatever you might want to use for that one and then also we have the transmission uh, and we have the gears so the zero one is the reverse and one is obviously the first gear if you need more gears then you just simply add another entry and it will give you another gear but then you need to configure this uh, like I, said, I don't know if I mentioned this previously already I'm gonna have linked down to their documentation where you can get a lot of good information about how you should uh, use these gears and all that stuff but let's let's just give this a quick test now so let's see okay so now it looks a little bit better so we can pull the handbrake and it's sliding there we go okay so this seems to be functioning just fine we can ride around and this seems to be functioning pretty good overall so yeah uh, that's basically it for my part of the tutorial obviously I am going to come back to this tutorial at a later point once I actually master this plugin because there's a lot in it and just so that you guys would know I'm just gonna show you some things that they have so you can download a test project from them and then once you download and launch it 
it's gonna be this guy right here. So with shift obviously you can run pretty fast and as you can see press Q for a menu. Once you press Q it gives you loads and loads of options so we can spawn ourselves some vehicles. So let me show you this drag race car which can pop a wheelie because it's that fast and we can crash significantly and with Z key it brings you back back to the back to your wheels so that's cool another cool option in this plugin is let me stop for a sec you can detach wheels very easily so if I press O you will see my wheels are disconnecting from my vehicle so my wheels just went away with keyboard key I no okay I don't remember which key but there was one key where it allowed you to reconnect uh, your wheels and what you want to do for that is just simply look for a node called detach and add that to your uh, component wheel so that one specific wheel and then when you launch that detach it's going to detach it so that's really simple and it's also in their documentation as well now let me show you some more vehicles uh, so for instance they so they have a lot of things so before I show you the next one let me show you you can become a spectator which actually saves you a lot of time when you want to travel from area to area in this mode so we can go up here once we are up here we can just press Q and it spawns us over here so that saves us a lot of time now the next cool thing is they have like a boost like a nitrous so they have this rocket semi track truck uh, which we can ride around by default it's quite slow but once you hit the boost ooh, this bad boy goes so I'm just gonna align myself with this ramp right here go full boost and launch this vehicle here we go <laughs> so that's quite fun so one more thing that this thing supports well two more things that I mentioned before is first we can use lights so with H in this demo, we can enable the lights. Also, we can use the turn signals. One, the other one. And also, as you can see, the brake lights turn on and off as well. And also, we can attach the trailer. Uh, let me just get closer to this. There we go. Okay, so that got, that got a little bit glitchy. <laughs> Uh, but that's, I guess, an issue on my part. I should have been standing, and once we are standing still, it attaches nicely. So that's another cool thing, and this feature does not come with the default uh, Unreal Engine vehicle system. So that's another huge plus for this system. And yeah, so go ahead, grab it while it's still free, because it's going to be free only this month, and after that, you will have to pay 80 euros for that, which is quite expensive. Uh, the whole thing seems very realistic as well it's not like super simulator-ish realistic but it is pretty darn close as you can see we are crashing so that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video so now you have some basic understanding of how to get started with this plugin once I personally will master this a little bit better once I know how to make these driftable vehicles and all the other good stuff and maybe come up with some ideas of my own uh, then I will come back to this plugin I will, and I will make some tutorials in the future about more uh, how to create more advanced vehicles as well not just that skateboard uh, but yeah go ahead grab the plugin while it's still free and thank you for watching subscribe to my channel join to my discord and I see you in the next one